previously on Let's Play Steins Gate Zero. The intruder was wearing a motorcycle suit, yeah, just like before, even the helmet was the same. The leather suit clung tight to, to their skin, revealing a, a vo voluptuous and perfectly proportioned body. Nice detail. <laughs> it was clearly a woman. And now, back to everyone being sad. Hello, everybody. Pokey here with another episode of Steins Gate Zero. And when we last left off, uh, what did Abam? Oh yeah, uh, Kagari came back. Uh, or at least I'm pretty sure that's Kagari. She said Big Sis. So uh, I'm still pretty shocked about that. But she came back. She uh, invaded the lab, and uh. I don't know, let's get right back into it. That was pretty bad. That was a pretty bad intro. I'm kind of tired. When July came, the sun shone down even harder on eastern Japan. Summer was truly here. The bad news had been say- the- wait, what is it bad news? The news had been saying for days that the heat- the heat island effect might make this the hottest summer in- in years. And then, on the first Sunday in July, I met with Maho in Akihabara. I was waiting at the... Oh, what a nice outfit. Unless that's the same outfit as usual and I'm just not used to seeing it zoomed out. At least I don't know. She's usually wearing the lab coat. I was waiting at the open cafe in the, at the UPX when Maho arrived. She was a little late. Okabe. It's been a while. She, by the way, uh, friggin' can't believe I forgot what happened with Maho and, uh, Dr. Leskinen. Did, I guess he didn't really abduct her, like I thought. Eh, we're probably gonna find out. <laughs> she ordered an iced coffee and took a deep breath. But you know, we talk to each other all the time on video chat. That's right, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Her habit of paying no attention to her clothes or looks hasn't changed at all in the last six months. People are going to think she was an elementary school kid who decided to go play at a friend's house. But it would upset her if I said that, so I never would. I had no idea you were here. If I hadn't happened to see Dr. Leskinen, I never would have found out. I was going to contact you once things calmed down. We, need to, we needed to talk to each other about Karisu at some point, eventually. You hear about the new encephalitis case? You're here about the new encephalitis cases? Dr. Leskinen is, at least. I'm his assistant, but I'm mostly in charge of Amadeus. Have there been any problems? I assume not, since I'm still getting my usual reports. Yeah, nothing really. Lately, it's been a struggle to deal with Karisu, though. <laughs> hey! I heard a voice from my smartphone, which I had placed on the table. What do you mean by struggle? I left the Amadeus app turned on. Of course, Karisu could hear everything we said. She's gotten a little ruder since we first met. You're just afraid of me for no reason, is all. Maybe. It was turning into our old relationship in the Alpha World line, where we fought all the time. I was starting to lose track of whether this was a good or bad thing for me. I thought I was trying to forget about Karisu. You were pretty rude when we first met. Th that was... She's rough on people when she meets them for the first time. You know why? Because they refuse to treat me like I'm my real age. Because they refuse to treat her like she's her real age. I read those, uh, bottom to top, and, uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Did you, the two of them spoke in unison, or one at a time, whichever is more convenient for the poison person voice acting them. <laughs> so I always get upset. Once I get to know someone, they stop talking about my appearance, right? So I can speak more normally around them, as all. I guess I was right not to comment on her outfit. <laughs> that was a close call. Anyway, back to Amadeus. 
It's an interesting sign that Kurisu is developing a bit of a sharp tongue. It's a side of her she never shows me or the professor, right? That may be a sign of how much she's opened up to you. I have not. Mo simply smiled and ignored her. We can analyze those psychological changes as code. This is a change we never would have seen if she'd only been speaking to me and the professor. That alone means we are right to keep you on as a tester. Is that how it works? Dr. Leskinen was very impressed by this, too. But by this, too. <laughs> you gotta emphasize the right words or the meaning completely changes. I think you're giving him too much credit. In fact, whenever he talks to me, he's always complaining. It's not very manly, you know. Well, I knew my personality had gotten a bit negative, especially given what I've been through. But did you really need to say that, say that to Maho right now? An eye for an eye it is, then. By the way, there's something I hadn't told you yet. What is it? It's something I don't think you or Dr. Luskinen are aware of. Wait, what are you going to tell her? Something Maho and the professor don't know? About me? Does the phrase, Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha mean anything to you? Hey! A few weeks ago, I'd actually search for Kuri Gohan and Kamehameha on, on a whim. It was the handle of the, it was the handle Kurisu had used on At Channel when she was still alive. From what I'd seen, the comments started in summer of 2008, then abruptly stopped in July of 2010. Then started up again in December of the of that same year. Oh, even now in July 2011, they were still appearing. Oh, if it wasn't Kurisu's ghost and it wasn't an imposter, then the one who could be writing those posts was... Intaro Kabe, why don't we have a private chat? <laughs> so it was you after all. Don't you think it's a bad idea not to tell them? It's an even worse idea to tell Maho. Why? Because I haven't breathed a word of t to her about me going on At Channel. Why hide it? It's not a crime to read her comments on At Channel. Isn't that right, At Chandler Kurisu? <laughs> Listen, call me that one more time, and I'll start making up gossip about you on At Channel. That's practically a crime, though. I couldn't help but laugh. <laughs> Conversations like this brought back so many memories. I used to be so full of myself that I'd tick off Kurisu all the time. Hey, what are you talking about? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Delete all your memories today from your hippocampus, please. <laughs> you can hide it, but she's going to find out eventually. You just shut up. <laughs> you two have gotten a lot closer over the last six months. Ah. Maho, I'm sorry. Huh? Why are you apologizing? No, just, it's been so long since you and Okabe have seen each other, and I'm doing all the talking. So, why don't you two take some time and chat? That's not what I meant. It's all Okabe's fault for saying something weird, isn't it? Is that true, Curry Gohan and Kamehameha? <laughs> Please don't say that. Just like the real Kurisu, she was strangely obsessed with hiding the fact that she was a Nat Chandler. I need to go cool off a little, so I'm going to hang up. Bye. Kurisu disappeared from the screen. Kurisu had been kind of rude lately, so it felt good to have a chance to get back at her. If I overdid it, she was probably going to hold a grudge, so this was likely a good place to stop. What's Kuri Gohan? If you really want to know, ask Karisu. If I explain it, she'd probably get mad and refuse to talk to me again. So, how long are you going to be staying here? It might be longer than last time. We barely know anything about the new encephalitis Dr. Leskinen is researching. 
it's possible that I'll be sent back on my own too. If you've got time, visit the lab. I'm sure Daru and Mayuri would love to see you. Mayuri, sure, but I don't know about Ishida. <laughs> Maho is finally starting to understand Daru's true nature. Speaking of Daru, he should be on a date with Yuki Amane right now. <laughs> oh. By the way, what happened to Karisu's what happened to Karisu's laptop? I destroyed it. Ah. It was the best thing to do. I explained that to you before, didn't I? Yeah, you're right. She looked down, a sad expression on her face. I told her I was going to do it ahead of time, but it still must have upset her to see one of the last things she had to remember Karisu by destroyed. Well. What the? Where the heck is this? About half the seats at Go Go Curry were full. It was Sunday, but it was also after 2 p.m., and so the lunchtime rush was over. Suzuo was sitting at the restaurant's far edge, a baseball cap pulled down over her face. She was hiding her face with the cap and carefully watching a couple sitting nearby. Uh, here you are, your major curry! A cheerful employee put down two giant silver plates, or trays more accurately, in front of them. Suzuo could see the other customers looking at them and whispering. The couple really stood out after all. The man was a giant who looked like he ate major curry all the time, but the woman was slim, pretty, and looked very kind. The combination of huge man and slim woman was as unbalanced as the combination of pretty girl and major curry. <laughs> the major curry was big. It was huge. Suzuo knew from experience. The massive silver trays were loaded with rice and curry, and topped with two fried cutlets, fried shrimp, sausage, a boiled egg, and a mount mountain of cabbage. There, were, there was two or three times as much curry as you'd find in a normal dish, and the toppings were just as big. Even a growing young boy would find it hard to eat them all. Suzuo, why are you spying on <laughs> them? Suzuo is irritated. Why are you ordering major curry on your first date with her, Dad? <laughs> the Beauty and the Beast couple that Zuzu was watching, of course, was Itaru and Yuki. In the morning, they'd gone to see a movie in, in Yura Kucho. Then they'd come to Akibara and just gone straight to Go Go Curry. Suzu had followed them the whole time. That's why she couldn't believe Itaru's choice of date spots. I don't mind go go curry at all. In fact, I like it, but this is your first date. There are other places you you could have gone. She clutched her spoon tight and gritted her teeth. Suzuo knew next to nothing about Japanese youth culture in 2011, and even though she knew it was a bad idea, who knew what was going through Yuki's mind, or so Suzuo thought. But oh, <laughs> it's adorable. Uh, well, how did I do the Yuki voice again? <laughs> wow, it's even more amazing than in the pictures! <laughs> Surprisingly, Yuki was ignoring the people around her and innocently enjoying the huge curry. Um, uh, Amanishi, if you can't eat it all, I'll finish it for you, okay? Okay, thank you, but I'm actually pretty good at this. Y yeah, that's a surprise. Hehehehe, <laughs> I actually would would always just come and look at the menu outside. I always wanted to try this. I'm glad you brought me here. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Suzu had evidently worried over nothing, but but still she realized Itaru was acting strangely. Ever since he'd come out of the movie theater, he was walking and talking strangely. Instead of his usual hunched posture, he was forcing himself to stand up straight. His every movement seemed oddly forced, as if he were a broken robot, and he downed glass after glass of water. Oh, I'm sorry, may I have some more water too? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Thank you. Itaru poured water into Yuki's cup. Suzuo had a bad feeling, and she was right, Itaru was moving so awkwardly that he almost spilled water on her, on her hand. Does it say hand? That's at hand. Yeah. Uh, are you okay? Um, my hand just got a little wet. Anyway, let's eat before it gets cold, okay? 
Yuki quickly wiped down the table with her handkerchief and grabbed her fork and spoon. There were stars in her eyes. <laughs> okay, let's eat. Let's eat. Yuki seemed to be really enjoying her meal, but Itaru was very formal and quiet. He was taking little nibbles out of a piece of fried cutlet, like a squirrel eating a nut. The whole time, they weren't saying a word. What are you doing, Dad? Mom's not going to want to be around you if you're like that. <laughs> she decided to send him a message on Ryan telling him to get his act together, and she'd just taken out her phone when... Here's your major curry with extra... I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Rokes, or whatever. <laughs> A huge plate was laid on the table in front of her. What is this, dramatic? The other customers started murmuring again. Come to think of it, when she followed them into the store, she'd order her usual major curry with extra rokes and then forgotten about it. Now everybody was going to focus on her. In a small shop like this, it was suicide. Oh, man! No! Oh! Awkward. <laughs> Silly music again. Let's see. Handle. An online nickname. It's rare for people to use online nicknames on boards like App Channel. If a user does not pick a nickname, they'll simply be displayed as anonymous. Major Curry. One of the items on the Go Go Curry menu. It consists of an extra large portion of rice, a pork loin katsu, chicken katsu, hot dogs, fried shrimp with tartar sauce, and a boiled... Excuse me. Ugh. And a boiled egg. That was gross. Huh? Ah. Uh, just as she expected, her eyes met Yuki's. <laughs> Suzuma, I didn't realize you were here. Oh, um. Yeah, what a coincidence seeing you here, Yuki, brother. You should have said something. No, I didn't even notice you, really. She realized that she should probably leave, but she couldn't go without at least taking a bite of the major curry in front of her. Her experiences in the war had left her completely unable to waste food. She felt Yuki and Yataru staring at her as she reluctantly picked up her spoon. Anyway, yeah, you two enjoy yourselves. Her only choice was to finish her extra large curry as soon as possible. She couldn't let herself be in the way. But instead, Yuki came over and picked up Suzuha's plate. Huh? Um, excuse me, can my friend sit with us? Sure, go ahead. He says it's okay, let's all eat together. Wait, 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 why? Why? Because you ordered Major Curry too. I think we need to have a race. <laughs> uh. Ashita can be the judge. And before Suzuha could respond, Yuki had moved her plate over to their table. No, wait. <laughs> she had no choice but to follow up, but before she sat down, she whispered in Yuki's ear. You're on a date, right? Huh? Oh yeah, I'm on a date. It makes me blush when I say it out aloud. <laughs> <laughs> Tara didn't react at all, even though she was... Sure, he'd overheard that. Um, I've never been on a date, so I don't know how they work, but is it normal to have a curry speed dating contest with another girl in the middle of a date? Hmm, I don't really know. But you see it a lot in anime and manga, don't you? <laughs> a little sister who doesn't want to lose her big brother runs up to the girlfriends. <laughs> oh my god, and said, let's have a competition. Okay, so... We're, it's, we're finally getting into the fact that Yuki wants to, like, battle with Suzua for the right for Daru. I am like, this is 100% canon. I just want to say that right now for the record. For some reason, Yuki seemed incredibly enthused. Suzua's overwhelmed by her energy. I, I don't know anything about that. Is that how it works, brother? But even when she turned to Itaru for help, he just awkwardly sat there, eating his curry like a robot. Brother? 
He awkwardly turned his head to face her. The rest of them stayed completely still. Did you say something? What's wrong? You're acting weird. I am not acting weird. I am not acting weird at all. <laughs> Suzuka glanced back at Yuki. <laughs> and for the first time, Yuki looked concerned. Was that it? In the end, Yuki and Suzuka did have their curry eating contest, and surprisingly, both of them completely finished their meals. Wait, you better tell me who won. Suzuka won by a very small margin, but the battle was exciting enough that not only the other customers, but the staff as well were applauding at the end. <laughs> but the whole time, Itaru kept eating by himself. Since this wasn't even a conversation, let alone a date, she sent Itaru home alone. Part of her wanted to demand Itaru to explain demand Itaru explain himself right now, but she decided to talk to Yuki instead. She tried her best to avoid Yuki so far in order to keep her identity a secret, but it was July now. She would be gone from this era very soon. This might be her last chance to talk to Yuki at all. Phew! I'm so glad you were there. Yuki sighed a little after Itaru left. Maybe I did something to offend him. She doesn't seem to enjoy being around me. You don't think he was just nervous? But he was having fun talking with me before the movie, you know? But after the movie, he started acting really strange. Did I do something wrong? I asked him to take me to the curry place, but since he was acting like that the whole time, I wasn't really sure what to do. And so, since you happen to be there, I turn to you for help. What had happened inside the theater? Suzuka hadn't followed them inside. She spent about two hours killing time outside. Hey. Why do you like my brother? Huh? <laughs> I mean, maybe I shouldn't say this, but he's not exactly a lady killer. What do you think about your brother? Me? Do you like him? Hate him? Please say like him? You like him, right? I can tell by watching you. Well, sure. There were parts of him that she didn't like, but of course she loved her dad. Wait, why are, you, why are we talking about me? <laughs> so, what about you? I still don't really know if I like him or not. I... I see. Not only had Itaru not told Yuki he liked her, but this... This was still their first date, and they hadn't spoken that much before, either. She hadn't even reached the point where she saw them as a... Where she saw him as a member of the opposite sex. For almost a year, Suzu had stayed with him, and she, Mayuri, and Ferris had done everything they could to get the two of them together. But there hadn't been any real progress. Suzuha felt uneasy when she thought about the future. Maybe her dad wouldn't be her dad anymore. Maybe her mom wouldn't be her mom anymore. Dad and mom wouldn't be together. She imagined that future. I don't want that. She looks straight into Yuki's eyes. I'm going to be leaving soon. What? I'm moving someplace far away. R really I don't think I'll be back. And I'm worried about dad, I, I mean brother. Uh, excuse me? Uh... Excuse me. <laughs> is... Is Yuki... Gonna react to this? Because... I'm not sure how I'd react to this. Um... You know what, actually... You know what I kinda wanna do? Actually, no. What I was thinking of doing was turning on Suzuka's voice and then playing that. Cause like right now if I if I hit enter to play the voice, it doesn't do anything because I have voices off completely. Um and like hearing what it sounded like in Japanese, but I don't know what the Japanese words for dad and brother are, so I wouldn't know how well she got away with that. <laughs> she didn't get away with it at all in English. Um <laughs> But <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, w I won't bother with that, but it's pretty funny. So, Yuki, 
Now, I know this is a weird thing for me to ask. And then she bowed deeply. Please take care of Itaru Hishida. There was no answer from Yuki. Zua looked up, afraid, and tried to gauge the expression on her face. She looked kind of lonely, and kind of sad. I don't know what I want to do. Yuki whispered, and then Suzua. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, I think that's about all the time I have for this episode. It might come come out to be a little bit short, but um, that should be pretty much it for today. Um, sorry, I was a bit tired, but this this was fun and funny. <laughs> uh, I'm really invested in Yuki as a character. Like all of a sudden, she's just really awesome, and it's canon. It's canon, guys. She's into incest. All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Pokey, this has been Steins Gate Zero, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!